Jason jolted at the sudden loud bang, his head snapping towards the plane's windows. Wondering about the cause, he cautiously attempted to shake off the birds, fully aware that any collision with the engines could spell disaster for the entire aircraft. As Jason grappled with the persistent avian menace, their aggression escalated, complicating his efforts to shoo them away. Perplexed by the intensifying situation, he couldn't fathom why the birds were becoming increasingly hostile. He realized the urgency of the matter when the passengers, growing anxious in the cabin, looked to him for reassurance. However, by the time he mustered confidence to address them, it seemed too late. The mysterious escalation of bird aggression left Jason with unanswered questions. Desperate for guidance, he initiated contact with flight control to explore his options. Despite the rising numbers and aggressiveness of the birds, reaching someone from flight control proved to be an insurmountable challenge. Passengers struggled to peer out the windows, now obscured by a blackened avian swarm, casting an eerie atmosphere inside the plane. Faced with the horrifying reality, Jason knew swift action was imperative. Attempting to gain altitude, he maneuvered the plane to shake off the birds, wary of the delicate balance between safety and danger. However, the sheer multitude of birds thwarted Jason's efforts, steering the plane downward. Panic set in as buildings loomed closer, prompting Jimmy to gasp at the impending danger. With quick thinking, Jason redirected the aircraft toward the countryside, narrowly avoiding a perilous situation above the city. Realizing the futility of gaining altitude, Jason grappled with the challenge of returning to the airport and executing a safe landing. Amidst the chaos, he received a crucial call instructing an immediate turnaround to the nearest landing strip. Flight control directed them to a smaller airport closer to their current position, hoping to alleviate the escalating bird-induced crisis. As the birds persisted and small cracks appeared in the windows, Jason learned that emergency services were en route to the airstrip. The pressure mounted as he understood that reaching the airstrip was crucial for their safety. Determined to avert disaster, Jason focused on the task at hand, navigating the plane with precision and doing everything in his power to avoid a catastrophic crash. As Jason approached the countryside, the situation took a turn for the worse. The moment he left the city limits, he observed that the condition of the airstrip deteriorated, especially the final segment close to the nearby forest, which seemed to attract more birds. The avian presence escalated rapidly, drawing the creatures toward the plane. Jason grew increasingly concerned, sensing that this could lead to a disaster. As more birds attacked, they ventured dangerously close to the engines, posing a serious threat. Jason concentrated intently on navigating the strip when a sudden loud bang echoed through the air. The plane began to shake uncontrollably, and Jason struggled to maintain command. The aircraft, now losing altitude, prompted terrified screams from the passengers. The worst-case scenario unfolded, the engine burst into flames, visible to the distressed passengers through the windows. With limited options, Jason spotted a body of water in the distance as the plane descended. Swift calculations suggested a risky but possible water landing. This became their only hope, as landing on solid ground could result in a catastrophic crash. In a tense moment, Jason skillfully executed a water landing, not without its challenges. Though not a gentle touch, it prevented the plane from breaking apart. Evacuation became imperative, but the situation inside the plane was dire. Jason, grappling with stress and desperation, struggled to open one of the exits, adding to the emotional intensity of the moment. Fortunately, one of the stewardesses successfully opened another exit just in time. Despite the slow sinking of the plane, they realized they had enough time to evacuate everyone safely. The crew worked to calm the panicked passengers, but some individuals, driven solely by self-interest, attempted to exit first, regretting their decision as birds attacked those who emerged prematurely. As chaos ensued, the birds directed their aggression mainly towards the entrance to the baggage room. The unfolding events left everyone wondering about the contents stored in that compartment. The Coast Guard diligently ensured the safe evacuation of everyone from the water. Additional boats approached to facilitate the rescue operation. 
passengers anxiously pointed towards the wreckage of the plane, catching Jason's attention. As he looked back, he was astonished to see the birds continuing to circle the plane, as though actively searching for something, Jason, bewildered, couldn't fathom what might be triggering such a peculiar reaction. From the birds. The situation took a more ominous turn when the Coast Guard attempted to approach the wreck. The birds became even more alert, seemingly unwilling to allow the Coast Guard to get close. Despite Jason's warnings, the Coast Guard, determined but perhaps naive, sailed closer. Upon reaching the wreckage, the Coast Guard vessels were viciously attacked by the birds. The intensity of the assault startled the crews, leading them to abandon their ships and swim back to the safety of other boats. The passengers and cabin crew watched in bewilderment, desperate to understand what could be provoking such a defensive response from the birds. As the rescue vessels inched closer, the birds resumed their aggressive swarming. The workers observed the sky darkening with the avian presence, signaling that they would need to exercise caution. They called for backup, aiming to scare the birds away, realizing it was the only way to proceed safely. This time, the birds concentrated their swarm on the ships when they were kept at a distance. The crew members who were outside found themselves surrounded, but fortunately, they swiftly retreated to the safety of the tugboats. This maneuver allowed the tugboats to approach more closely, as the birds couldn't reach the captain on board. Fortuitously, Jason devised a plan based on his education, recalling that airports employ sounds to scare off birds. He suggested to the Coast Guard that they use similar tactics to disperse the birds. Acting promptly, the Coast Guard activated their speakers, emitting high-pitched noises. To their surprise, the birds responded by fleeing back into the forest. The Coast Guard understood the importance of maintaining the sound to prevent the birds from returning. With the birds temporarily dispersed, the Coast Guard saw an opportunity to tow the plane out of the water. Under their guidance, the tugboat secured their cables to the plane and began the towing process. Fortunately, the plane was easily maneuvered, and it became a matter of time before it could be thoroughly examined. As this unfolded, the police arrived on the scene. As Jason was responsible for the plane, the police directed their inquiries toward him. With nothing to hide, Jason cooperated and explained that it was a routine flight, one he had undertaken almost every week without incident. He highlighted that the birds, upon entering the plane, were consistently drawn to the luggage room. Jason speculated that this might hold the key to understanding the day's events. The police, keen on unraveling the mystery, delved into detailed questions about the luggage. Jason redirected them to the passengers, who, despite being visibly shaken, readily provided answers. However, one individual stood out, drawing suspicion from the police. This person seemed evasive, offering contradictory statements and raising doubts about the purpose of their trip. The police regarded this behavior as highly suspicious. Refusing to provide details about his luggage, the suspicious individual prompted a background check, leading to unsettling discoveries. His passport appeared to be fake, raising red flags. A deeper investigation revealed that he was a recently released convicted felon, with sealed documents adding an element of mystery to the situation. Alarmed by these findings, authorities sought to identify him through fingerprints. As they input his fingerprints into the database, a match was found, linking him to a past criminal record. The government had sealed his documents, leaving law enforcement in the dark about the exact nature of his past offenses. Concerns grew, and the focus shifted to determining what he was transporting and why the birds had such a strong reaction. Finally, the plane was successfully removed from the water, and a specialized research team arrived to thoroughly search the wreckage. However, before they could begin, the distant sounds of birds alerted them to a renewed threat. The birds, realizing the ships had sailed away, swarmed the plane, raising suspicions that they were attempting to infiltrate the luggage department. Undeterred, the research team used speakers to scare off the birds and entered the damaged plane. Navigating through the debris, they located the source of the troubling sounds in specific suitcases. Upon opening them, shock and gasps filled the air. The research team immediately contacted the police, 
urging them to apprehend the shady passenger, as the name on the suitcase matched the one on the fake passport. Carefully extracting the suitcases from the plane, Jason, rushing towards them, turned pale at the revelation. It became apparent that the man was smuggling exotic birds. Additional law enforcement details revealed that the man had a history of animal smuggling. Jason, overwhelmed with emotion, learned that the birds attacked the plane because they heard the exotic birds within, calling for help. The man faced charges, including endangering the passengers, and it was evident he would not be released again. Jason, present at the trial, burst into tears, relieved that everyone was safe. The incident concluded with a sense of closure, emphasizing the significance of the passenger's well-being above all else. After watching this story, what do you think of? Next is the other story. Let's continue. One winter afternoon, a puppy was trapped in the snow. It was obvious that he was too weak to escape, helpless and lonely. Many people pass by, and some feel sorry for the puppy, but it is not enough to stop and help him. Many others did not notice him at all. Then a goose appeared. We don't know where she came from, but she walked down the street and noticed the poor frozen puppy. At first she just stopped to look at the poor dog, as if deciding what to do. Then she went to the puppy with firm determination. People around them stopped to see what would happen, and they were startled by what happened before them. The goose approached the dog, then sat down beside him and covered him with her wings. The puppy did not move for a long time, either because it was unbelievable or just because it was too cold, but after a few minutes it finally opened its eyes and buried its nose in the warm feathers of its new friend. The puppy and the goose have been sitting together for a long time. Many people are tired of watching this, so they move on. But others stayed to see what happened next. One person took some photos, and these photos spread all over the internet, showing us this incredible story. Unfortunately, we don't know what happened next. Is there a bystander taking in the puppy? Or did he stay on the street? Where did the goose come from, and where did she go? The photographs capture only a brief moment between a puppy nobody cared about and a goose who showed him real sympathy and compassion on that cold day. These photos make you feel hopeful that the world has not disappeared, even if on that day, it was not a person who offered friendly support, but a goose. The fact remains that we need to be more caring and friendly to those who really need our help. The next incredible story has been circulating on the internet for a long time. It's hard to believe. It's up to you to decide whether it is true or not. This is a story told according to the protagonist's words. When my mother was young, she was in the hospital, and there was a woman with her in the ward. Her name was Natalie. She comes from the countryside, knows little about urban life, and tells many interesting things about rural life. I like listening to my mother retell these stories. Natalie's most memorable story is about a cow in their village. I often ask my mother to tell me stories about cows. My mother always sits down with a smile and starts telling stories. Natalie lived in the village all her life. Their lives are poor. Their family's greatest wish is to have a cow, but the cow is very expensive and the family can't afford it. Natalie's mother works as a nurse in a local hospital, and her salary is very low, only enough to support a family of five children. Natalie is the eldest in the family. She always helps her mother with housework and takes care of her younger brothers and sisters. Natalie's father is a tractor driver. He works almost all the time, especially during the active harvest in autumn and spring. His salary is also very small, which is used to buy clothes and household necessities, every child in the family has his own responsibilities. Natalie, as the eldest daughter, is responsible for taking care of her brothers and sisters. They don't have much food. They mainly eat vegetables grown in their own garden, and every night they talk about how well they would live if they had a cow. The cows will give them milk from which they can make sour cream, cheese and delicious tortillas, so that the family has absolutely enough food. Then they decided that they must save money to buy a cow. The whole family decided that instead of buying extra clothes, they would use the money to buy a cow. 
For nearly a year, my parents have been saving money, and finally they have collected the money they need. On the rest day, mom and dad go to the farm to choose their own cows. The dairy farmer promised that the cow produced good milk and the price was not very high. Natalie's parents bought the cow and took it home without hesitation. The happiness of this family is enormous. This cow is really good. She gave so much milk, enough to satisfy all the needs of their family, and seven people drank milk every day, Natalie learned how to make sour cream, cheese, delicious cheesecake and yogurt. Their tables are filled with different products produced with milk. Their families are very generous, and they are happy to entertain relatives and friends with delicious milk. Soon, their milk was in short supply, because the milk produced by their cows was of good quality, and the family decided to sell the rest of the milk in the market. In the morning, Natalie went into the barn, milked the cows, and then brought fresh milk into the house. She puts the quantity needed for the family day there, then bottles the rest and sells it in the market. The family began to have extra money, and they decided to save money to buy a second cow. Everything is great. The family is very happy to have such a cow. One morning, Natalie went to milk again, but the amount of milk was much less than usual. Confused Natalie went into the house and told her mother. Maybe she doesn't feel well today. Her mother replied. The main thing is that we have enough milk today, and tomorrow we can go to the market. But the next morning, there was even less milk, and Natalie's parents began to worry. What happened to their poor cow? They decided to ask the veterinarian to check whether the cow was ill. The vet came and examined the cow carefully, but found nothing wrong with her health. He just said that cows are healthy, and he doesn't know the reason for the decrease in milk. He suggested that they feed her more, which might help. In order to raise the second cow at home, they bought a special feed to improve the lactation ability of the cow. They fed her this food for a whole month, but to no avail, the amount of milk has never increased. The frustrated parents decided to invite the local shaman to perform the ceremony, because the cow might have had bad luck. They don't really believe this, but they are very desperate. The wizard came, brought some herbs which he had burned for a long time in the barn, read some spells, and then put his hand on the cow. But it didn't help, and the milk was getting less and less every day, even though the cow looked healthy. The family tried every means to find the reason for such a decrease in milk, but never found an answer. People come to their house because they can't find Natalie in the market. They really wanted to buy their milk, and they were upset when they learned that there was no more milk for sale. Parents go to the farm where they buy cows to see if other cows have changed like this. But they were told that the milk production of other cows had not dropped, and the farmers did not know what might have gone wrong with their cows. One morning, Natalie was woken up by a long howl from the barn. She opened her eyes. It must be a dream, Natalie thought. Because of constant thinking about milk, girls often dream of cows. But there was a constant howl. No, it's not a dream. What really happened in the barn? Natalie put on her jacket and rushed into the yard. Opening the barn door, Natalie was dumbfounded. Stunned by the sight before her, she hurried back to the house. The girl shook her sleeping father. The father saw his daughter's pale face and frightened eyes and hurried to the barn. But when he went in, he froze with fear too. A serpent wrapped around the corbel, clinging to the cow's breast, was eager to drink her milk. My father didn't know what to do, but stood and watched. When the snake was full, it slowly slid down from the corbel and got into a hole in the corner. So this is our answer. The snake drank all the milk in the early morning, and then crept away quietly. Father immediately repaired the hole in the barn tightly. Natalie said that for a long time she entered the barn with uneasy feelings because she was afraid that the snake would come back, but the snake obviously failed to find its hole and finally forgot the way into the barn. The milk was abundant again, and the family resumed their usual life. Natalie started going to the market again. They quickly saved money to buy a second cow, and things improved. 
decided to sell the rest of the milk in the market. In the morning, Natalie went into the barn, milked the cows, and then brought fresh milk into the house. She puts the quantity needed for the family day there, then bottles the rest and sells it in the market. The family began to have extra money, and they decided to save money to buy a second cow. Everything is great. The family is very happy to have such a cow. One morning, Natalie went to milk again, but the amount of milk was much less than usual. Confused Natalie went into the house and told her mother. Maybe she doesn't feel well today. Her mother replied. The main thing is that we have enough milk today, and tomorrow we can go to the market. But the next morning, there was even less milk, and Natalie's parents began to worry. What happened to their poor cow? They decided to ask the veterinarian to check whether the cow was ill. The vet came and examined the cow carefully, but found nothing wrong with her health. He just said that cows are healthy, and he doesn't know the reason for the decrease in milk. He suggested that they feed her more, which might help. In order to raise the second cow at home, they bought a special feed to improve the lactation ability of the cow. They fed her this food for a whole month, but to no avail, the amount of milk has never increased. The frustrated parents decided to invite the local shaman to perform the ceremony, because the cow might have had bad luck. They don't really believe this, but they are very desperate. The wizard came, brought some herbs which he had burned for a long time in the barn, read some spells, and then put his hand on the cow. But it didn't help, and the milk was getting less and less every day, even though the cow looked healthy. The family tried every means to find the reason for such a decrease in milk, but never found an answer. People come to their house because they can't find Natalie in the market. They really wanted to buy their milk, and they were upset when they learned that there was no more milk for sale. Parents go to the farm where they buy cows to see if other cows have changed like this. But they were told that the milk production of other cows had not dropped, and the farmers did not know what might have gone wrong with their cows. One morning, Natalie was woken up by a long howl from the barn. She opened her eyes. It must be a dream, Natalie thought. Because of constant thinking about milk, girls often dream of cows. But there was a constant howl. No, it's not a dream. What really happened in the barn? Natalie put on her jacket and rushed into the yard. Opening the barn door, Natalie was dumbfounded. Stunned by the sight before her, she hurried back to the house. The girl shook her sleeping father. The father saw his daughter's pale face and frightened eyes and hurried to the barn. But when he went in, he froze with fear too. A serpent wrapped around the corbel, clinging to the cow's breast, was eager to drink her milk. My father didn't know what to do, but stood and watched. When the snake was full, it slowly slid down from the corbel and got into a hole in the corner. So this is our answer. The snake drank all the milk in the early morning, and then crept away quietly. Father immediately repaired the hole in the barn tightly. Natalie said that for a long time she entered the barn with uneasy feelings because she was afraid that the snake would come back, but the snake obviously failed to find its hole and finally forgot the way into the barn. The milk was abundant again, and the family resumed their usual life. Natalie started going to the market again. They quickly saved money to buy a second cow, and things improved.